Hey guys, Justin here with DIY or Die, and today I'm going to be finishing this monstrosity of a project, my engine timing job, which has been a complete and utter nightmare, and I never want to have to do this job again. I mean, I would if I had to. But honestly, this was the hardest DIY project that I've ever done in my life. In this video, for part three, I'm gonna wrap up showing the installation of all of the timing components. Then I will go into showing how I reinstalled the front cover. And after that, I installed the rest of the roller followers. And unfortunately, I didn't get good video for the valve cover installation, but installing those valve covers was basically the same process of removing them in the first place. And same thing with all of the other um, interference. So I'll show some pictures of what it looks like at the end, um, but reinstalling all of the cable harnesses and everything else that I had initially removed was the same process um, in reverse from how I removed it all. If you remember from my part one video, I dropped a bolt into the oil pan while I was doing the timing job. So at the end of this video, I also include some of the clips that I took of me replacing the oil pan. All right, I got the uh, camshaft taken out on the driver's side. And I'm taking out the rest of the roller followers. Then I'll put the camshaft back in so it's ready for the timing. I'm also going to do the same for the passenger side. All right, I'm getting ready to put the uh, cams back onto the engine, but I just wanted to take a quick second to show how I laid all my components out when I took them out of the engine so that I would know exactly how to put them back in. So this is the driver's side over here. This is the passenger side, and I laid everything out exactly as it was in the engine before I took it out. So all of my roller followers, this would be the engine side. So facing the engine, and facing away from the engine. I lined them all up exactly how they were in there. These are the cam holders right here. I lined them all up in a row so I'd know exactly where to put them back. And I even kept the screws in the same spots when I took those out as well. I'm replacing all of my lash adjusters and all of my roller followers. So I've got my new ones over here. This is what the old one looks like. Um, as I was pulling them out, I didn't really notice anything terrible about them about the ones I pulled out. Um, some of them did seem to have a little bit of play uh, when I pushed down on the top. All the new ones, um, they look pretty much identical. And in order to just swap them out, I've already pulled all the old ones out, got them in that bag, and I'm just gonna go ahead and pop the new ones right back in the same spots. All right, I got all of my lash adjusters replaced. I'm going to put the camshafts back in, tighten them down so that I can install the phasers and then the timing chains. And one thing that made the job easier for taking the cam off and then putting it back on is using um, my impact driver here. All right, I've got both of my cams back in place. I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, crank sprocket back on making sure that I keep the dot facing out all right I've got my new phasers this is an old phaser so you can see all the varnish on that one brand new shiny ones I'm ready to go ahead and install these and in order to do that I'm gonna need my OTC tool it's got teeth on it that fit inside the gears on the phaser to lock it in place once it's bolted uh, down on the uh, the front of the engine and that allows that will allow me to torque it and I'm going to torque it to 30 foot pounds uh, one note is that I'm also replacing the phaser bolt as well those bolts are not reusable so the kit that I bought came with bolts to go with the phasers all right, the phaser is only going to go on the cam one way. It's got that pin right there on the top, and that's going to fit into that key on the cam, just like this. So just twist it a little bit until it slides on. Get it all the way in there. Okay, and then there we go. Now for the bolt. I'm going to just thread it with my fingers so I don't cross-thread it. OK, 
Okay, I've got my passenger side phaser installed and I'm ready to torque down the bolt to 30 foot-pounds. This is the OTC tool and I've got it bolted in here and I can see the, uh, the teeth of the tool are engaged with the phaser and that is what is going to prevent this from spinning while I torque it down. My uh, kit came with these instructions. I tightened um, the first phaser to 30 foot-pounds, now I'm going to do the additional 90 degree turn. So I've got my uh, breaker bar on here and I want to go 90 degrees. Ideally I would have it lined up perfectly vertical and just go you know, from the 12 o'clock to the 3 o'clock position. Uh, we're more at like the 11 o'clock, but this bolt right here is right about at a 90 degree from the position it's at right now. So I'm going to go ahead and crank this down until my breaker bar handle is in line with this bolt over here. Alright, I used this OTC timing tool that slides on the keyway. Mine was very difficult to get on. I did manage to get it all the way on, but I had to pry it back off, so I'm not going to put it back on again. But this hole right here lines up with that little nub down there and that makes sure that the keyway is at the 11 o'clock position which is the critical piece for the timing. So I'm going to go ahead and take this piece back off and now I'm ready to put my crankshaft, crankshaft sprocket back on. I've got the passenger side timing chain guide in. I've got the bolts already tightened down, but I'm going to torque them to 89 inch-pounds. Alright, just double check them. On to the next side. All right, here I've got the old uh, driver side timing chain guide. I kept the bolts in the old one so that I could transfer them to the new one. Uh, the new one came with this big label on it, and that was kind of sticky and left some residue, so I had to use some goof off uh, sticker remover to get all that off uh, before I put it inside the engine. Another reason why you always want to inspect even your brand new parts, I should just be able to be able to take my pick. And just get rid of that. So that is what was inside of the keyway. That little metal shard right there. Alright, so I've got my <clears throat> crankshaft sprocket and I've got my driver's side chain and I've got the single colored link aligned with the timing dot on the sprocket and since we're doing the driver's side first the chain is going to go on the back set of teeth on the sprocket the passenger side will go on the front so I want to make sure I get this right right now because once I put the passenger side chain on then I won't be able to see that color link anymore there we go so that timing dot chain tooth is right there in the center of that colored chain link. All right, on the other side of the chain, these two colored links are gonna go right around the tooth that is lined up with the L on the driver's side. All right, so I've got the other two colored chains, or chain links, surrounding that L right there. So the L is directly in the middle. So I've got my chain installed and I'm ready to put on the other uh, chain guide. Okay, so this chain guide just slips right over that little pin down there with the, uh, the white plastic side towards the chain. Alright, get my chain all lined up there. All right, I'm ready to install the tensioner. And so I've got the bolts in there. I'm careful not to drop them, but I wanna take a look at that seal 
that seal is so much better than the older one and I really think that I had a problem with my seals on the older one so I'm glad I'm changing these out anyways these bolts are gonna go right in here I'm gonna go ahead and uh, th get the thread started and then I'll tighten it down and we'll go ahead and torque it and it looks like I might need to actually take the bolts out get it set and then put the bolts in okay I'm not going to tighten it very tight because I don't want to crank down on the seal on one side I'm just gonna get them snugged up and then I'm going to torque them down to 18 foot-pounds all right so I've got the passenger side all finished up I've got my two colored chains aligned directly over the R and I've already double checked that both of my chains the single colored is lined up with the timing dot on the bottom at the six o'clock position the last thing that I have to do on this side is just pull a clip on the tensioner and I've made sure that everything's lined up um, the chains on the chain guides looks good so I'm ready to go ahead and pull that clip there we go now I've got tension on that chain and everything seems nice and tight so there it is so far uh, ready to move on with the procedure all right the next thing I'm going to do is reinstall this trigger wheel and it says front so I'm going to make sure this is facing away from the engine like this all right I got the uh, new crank seal in made sure that it goes down below the uh, the chamfer and here's what the old seal looks like once I took it out and got a little damaged while I was taking it out but no big deal now I'm going to go ahead and install the uh, gaskets on the back all right I've got all the new seals installed on my front cover got the crankshaft seal and got <clears throat> all of the uh, face seals on there as well so the front cover is ready to go back on all right I just wanted to show how I organized all of my front cover bolts in a way that I would be able to easily remember them and where they go all right I've got my uh, black gasket maker sealant and I'm ready to go ahead and put that on first and uh, there are six joints on the front then I'll go ahead and install the cover and then I'll go ahead and install the bolts and go through the torque sequence all right I've got the front cover on and all the bolts tightened down to the proper torque except for the oil pan bolts I'm going to leave those off because I'm going to be taking off the oil pan and replacing it and cleaning it out uh, I dropped one of the bolts I dropped one of the oil pump bolts down there when I was installing the oil pump and I'll be able to get that out when I take off the oil pan I'll be able to reach the uh, I'll be able to reach the uh, oil inlet pipe and get that bolt back in there once I take the oil pan off to finish up the oil pump installation and then I'm gonna go ahead and put on a new oil pan a new gasket and then I'll continue with uh, the rest of the project um, but I'm gonna do that last so I'm gonna continue on uh, with the timing job and get the uh, roller followers back in get the valve covers back on get everything else put together um, and then the oil pan I'm gonna save for last all right the next thing that I'm gonna get is the uh, power steering pump and I'm gonna get that back up onto the engine all right I got the crankshaft pulley installed and torqued to 37 foot-pounds so word of caution when you're putting on the idler pulleys make sure the pulley is seated before um, using the impact to go ahead and tighten it down I accidentally uh, cross-threaded I believe um, the inside of these threads over here now the bolt is in M8 1.25 millimeter bolt and I'm going to have to re-tap the threads in here that being said I'm going to continue 
I can go ahead and, uh, and do that later. Right now, I uh, spun my crankshaft so that my um, passenger side camshaft is in the right position for me to go ahead and put back in my roller followers. Okay, I've got all my new roller followers laid out in the same orientation as my old ones. I'm ready to go ahead and start putting them back in. So these are the old roller followers and these are the new roller followers. In order to install the roller followers, I had to rotate the camshaft until the cam lobes were in the 11 or 12 o'clock position. And then this allowed me to use the OTC tool to compress the valve spring and slip the new roller followers in underneath the cam lobe. I had to do a few roller followers at a time before I would have to rotate the camshaft again to the next position to allow the next set of roller followers to be installed. I wasn't able to obtain video of the installation, but the process for installing these roller followers is the same as the process for removing them. These are my valve cover gaskets here, and I've got the new gaskets over here, and the gaskets came with these new grommets, and so I am going through the process of taking off the old grommets and installing these new grommets. So these just pop out of the valve cover, but taking off these grommets, the easiest way I found is just to use a razor blade and cut through the old grommet. And just peel it right off. And then for installing the new grommet, these are going to be press fit on there. And I put a little bit of oil on the inside to help it. And I slowly work it in there because this is a really tight fit. Just kind of rotate it and push at the same time just to get it popped on there. Alright, got one side popped on. Got the other side popped on. Now I just push it all the way in. And slow. Just make sure that it didn't crack or anything. And this one's ready to pop back in. So now that I've got the grommet installed back on the bolt here, it's just a press fit back in to the valve cover. And now that one's good to go. I'm gonna go. All right, I've got the new gaskets installed on both the valve covers. I've got all the grommets installed on all my valve cover bolts. I'm ready to go ahead and install my valve covers. All right, at this point, I'm ready to go ahead and reinstall my valve covers and just doing a final check. I've already torqued down all of those cam holder bolts to eight, 89, 89 uh, inch pounds. I've got my VCT solenoid installed. All my timing components are done, my front cover's on. The last thing that I have to do is go ahead and add some black gasket maker to these joints right here and on the bottom right here before I put my valve cover on. I wasn't able to record video of me installing the valve cover since I needed both hands to do that, but at this point I use my black gasket sealer, apply it to the joints, then I install the valve covers, then I torque the valve cover bolts down to eight, nine inch pounds. And then after that, I go ahead and I reinstall all of the harnesses and all of the wiring and finish putting everything back together to complete the job. This is just going to be the reverse process of everything I covered in part one of how to remove all the interference for this job. The last thing that I'm gonna show in this video is some clips of me replacing the oil pan and that was a super difficult job that I hope to never do again. By the time that I was done with this project um, and was able to get everything put back together again and fired up and get it running again, um, it took me about probably over 50 hours from start to finish to do this entire job and that was including 
removing and replacing the oil pan. Out for this stabilizer bar here, and what the problem is is this bolt is stripped on top, so I can't actually get a wrench on this. I've tried um, using a couple different methods, so I'm just going to have to replace this whole part, and I'm just going to cut that bolt. All right, so in order to get out my oil pan, I had to uh, kind of use this wood once I loosened up the uh, the front axle and I had to use this to actually pry it down to get enough leverage on there push down hard enough and that drove the shaft down far enough uh, to give me enough clearance to get the oil pan out so I've got I've got the old oil pan out that's what it looks like up inside of there and so instead of having to drop the whole axle by uh, taking out on this bolt right up here all right I've got my new oil pan ready to install and the trick to getting the old one out because um, I have a 2013 Ford Expedition EL with four wheel drive and it was just such a tight clearance here i had such a problem getting the old oil pan out and i would not have been able to get the old oil pan out had i not removed the uh the oil pan or sorry the uh the oil pump suction tube so this guy right here i had to take that out um, and the problem was, the problem is this suction was so low, I couldn't get enough clearance to clear that lip right there. So I just took the pipe out. So I just took the pipe out with the oil pan and dropped both of them together. That required me to unbolt this side from the oil pump. All the way up at the front here. All right, so right there is where the oil fill tube connects to the oil pump so the trick is when I'm installing this new one now I'm going to have to uh, put the oil fill tube back in at the same time as I'm installing the new pan and I have to tighten down those two bolts there on the oil pump and then there was one other bolt um, right that went right there that held the uh, oil fill tube so I'm gonna have to get that tightened down and then finish installing the oil pan at the same time. All right, here I've got the old oil pan and one of the reasons why I just wanted to change this out is because of how rusty it was anyways. That's the old gasket. So definitely, definitely a good time since I had to take this out anyways to just go ahead and replace it. Over here I've got the new oil pan and the new gasket and I've also got the uh, oil fill tube ready to go back in so I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the gasket sealing surface there I'm gonna have to use some um, gasket sealant on the corners all four corners are gonna need some I'm gonna clean up that's part of the old gasket over there I'm gonna clean that up and before I put the new pan and gasket on um, Gonna need some uh, some sealant there on the front two corners. These uh, transmission cooler lines really got in the way. They were really a pain in the butt. That is the oil fill tube, and those are the two bolts. And I had to once I got the oil pan, the new oil pan in here, I had to kind of scoot it back a little bit more so that I could get access to that. Uh, oil fill tube and I'm still in the process of tightening those bolts. The bottom bolt for the oil fill tube is in there. That one was pretty easy to get. I was able to put that on my uh, my socket with an extension and get that up in there and get it threaded in. For this other one it's a little bit trickier um, so what I'm going to use is this 15 pound magnetic retriever and I've got the bolt right on the end there and I'm going to use this Get it all the way up in that hole. So what I've got is a quarter inch flex head 
ratchet 12 inch uh, extension bar, a swivel head, a quarter inch swivel with the 8 mil short uh, well socket. And I was able to stick, stick the bolt on top of that socket and get it all the way up there in that hole and now I've got it threaded so I'm going to go ahead and finish tightening it down.